Hello children, Deshya Vidyashala Samiti Shumogga welcomes you to the first year POC Biology Practicals. So this is our independent college. It also welcomes you. Get set to learn your practicals through video classes. I am Shruti Ramaswamy. So going to explain you about some biochemical tests. This is practical number 19. Let us now learn as to how to detect the carbohydrates as well as the proteins in a given sample. Well children, in this particular practical, we are going to test for the detection of carbohydrates. Well the aim is to detect the presence of carbohydrates like glucose, sucrose and starch. We are limiting to know or to detect the glucose in the given sample. Well, how to or what would be the principle behind this? See, carbohydrates with free aldehyde and ketone groups reduce copper sulfate of Benedict's solution and Felling's reagent to cuprous oxide forming a yellow or brownish red colored precipitate depending on the concentration of the sugar. We all know what's a carbohydrate. It's a polyhydroxy aldehyde or a ketone. So to detect the presence of this carbohydrate, carbohydrate in the sense might be either the glucose with the monosaccharide or else it might be a starch with the polysaccharide. So we are going to detect the presence of this. Let us now check the requirements. Well, it would be the test tubes, then Benedict's reagent, Felling's solution A and B, concentrated HCl, sodium hydroxide solution, iodine solution, a spirit lamp or else it might be a water bath that we would be using. So it's the test of the glucose or rather test for the glucose. So here the test that we are conducting for detection of the glucose is Benedict's test. Children you need to know the pronunciation properly so that you can write the spelling properly. It is Benedict's test for glucose. Well, what would be the procedure here? See, in the experimentation, we take around 2 ml of the sample in a test tube. Then, we add around 2 ml of Benedict's reagent to that test tube. Then, we boil it for a span of about 2 to 3 minutes. Then, what are we going to observe? We shall see practically. So, here, this is the sample. I am just taking 2 ml of the sample to this. I am adding 2 ml of the Benedict's reagent. Okay. What are we observing here? It's almost blue color because the cuprous content is present here. I am making use of a water bath. Okay. We are boiling this for a span of 2 to 3 minutes. See if you find it little bit hot to hold, you can use the test tube holder. Okay, literally two to three minutes you need to heat it in the water bath. Slowly you are seeing the color change. There was yellowish, greenish and now it's almost brick red. Yes, it's perfectly brick red in its color. Okay. Now children, 
we shall see what has happened actually. In the observation, we are writing the brick red color appears. Then there is in the inference reducing sugar, that's glucose which is a monosaccharide is present. And finally, very important is this result, glucose is present in the given sample. Okay. Why did the color change? What's the reason behind this? We shall be knowing. When Benedict's solution and simple carbohydrates are heated, the solution changes to orange red or brick red. The reaction is caused by the reducing property of the simple carbohydrates. The cupric ions present in the Benedict's solution are reduced to cuprous ions and that is why there is a change in the color. See this is how the test was conducted. See there we just heated in the water bath. So, what color we had earlier was blue and later on after heating for a span of about 2 to 3 minutes we obtained the brick red color. Well, let us now check the Benedict's test results for levels of the reducing sugar. See children, so this particular test usually would be conducted by the diabetic patients they themselves. Sometimes when they, when they are chronic diabetic, the doctor advises no need of going to the laboratory very frequently for the test. So they can conduct this at home itself using the Benedict's reagent. So, here when they add up without heating it is blue, but if there is very traces of this uh, sugar content glucose in the urine, what happens? It would be indicating that 0 0.5 to 1 percent of the glucose is present. So, in the same urine, if the same urine is beholding much of the uh, sugar or the glucose, then yellow precipitate will indicate that the person is having low sugar level 1 to 1.5 percent. And if there is orange red precipitate that has been obtained, it would be indicating around 2. Then if it is a brick red precipitate that has been obtained, then it indicates that there is very high glucose concentration in the urine. Children, as such in the normal human beings, so urine does not contain the glucose. But if a person is diabetic, then the urine of a diabetic patient will have the glucose within it. So, when they conduct the test, it indicates the range or the percentage of the glucose in the urine. So, if it is more than uh, 2 percent, then it is a must that he will have to get some of the measures to reduce the glucose level in his blood. Okay. Next, one more carbohydrate we have that is the test for the starch. So, here while conducting the test for the starch, we will be using the iodine solution. It goes like this, take a test tube, add the starch sample. Okay. Now, we will be taking one or two drops of the iodine solution. Lugol's iodine. See, what is the color here? So, it has turned out to be bluish black. Okay. See here, add 1 to 2 drops of iodine solution to 2 to 3 ml of the sample. So, blue black color is seen and this indicates the presence of starch in the sample and this is how you will have to report starch is present in the given sample. Now, what is the story behind this? See starch is a polysaccharide, 
what happens there amylose content will be there the iodine just gushes into slides into the starch coil to give a blue black color that's how the color changes amylose in starch is responsible for the formation of a deep blue color in the presence of iodine the iodine molecule which is there slightly slips inside the amylose coil this makes a linear tri iodide ion complex which is soluble to slip into the coil of the starch causing an intense blue black color and that was about the test for the carbohydrates now we shall be knowing the test for detect detection of the proteins this is practical number 20 well children the principle that lies behind this proteins respond to some color reactions due to the presence of one or more radicals or groups of the complex protein molecule we know protein is a polypeptide chain of the amino acids all proteins do not contain the same amino acids and hence they do not respond to all color reactions nitrogen atoms in the peptide chain form a complex with copper ions in the biuretin test that's why you can conduct this biuretin reagent test for detection of the protein so what happens there violet color would be obtained the other test is xanthoproteic test but we are not conducting that now so this xanthoproteic test is specific for protein containing aromatic amino acids the benzene ring in the amino acids is nitrated by heating with nitric acid and forms yellow nitro compounds which turns to orange color with an alkali now what are the requirements it's the test tubes and the biuret reagent directly we can place this or a 40 percent sodium hydroxide solution or one person copper sulfate solution can be kept over there now how do you conduct this see here we take a test tube and 2 to 3 ml of the sample is added into the test tube later on we have directly the biuret reagent so we are adding just 2 to 3 dro drops of this biuret reagent and we can note the change here very light violet color appears don't add biuret reagent to your heart's content okay it's one to two, two drops that you are supposed to add up and it indicates the violet color rather it changes to violet color indicating the presence of the protein okay then you write in the observation violet color appears inference protein is present and finally we need to write down what is there okay here the normal color of biuret reagent is blue right the normal color of the biuret reagent is blue the reagent will turn violet in the presence of the peptide well the normal color of biuret reagent is blue the reagent turns violet in the presence of peptide bonds the chemical bonds that hold the amino acids together okay the reagents copper ions which are there with a charge of about plus 2 are reduced to the charge of plus 1 in the presence of peptide bonds causing the color change and that's how it appears to be violet well children this is what you have done for your practical classes now your question in your lab exam conduct a suitable biochemical test to detect the presence of dash in the given sample c one of the samples will be placed now you need to write the procedure then observation and result so each carrying one mark and whatever you conduct should be 
just report it to the examiner. So you will have to write it down in your answer script, then after conducting the experiment, you will have to show it to the examiner and get a signature done and that will help you fetch 3 marks. So easy, isn't it? Thank you.